I'm not sure. Did you ever ask him why is it he wrote you a letter? No. Did you ever ask him how he how he got your name? No. And since you met him, you told him that you love him? Yes. And he told you that he loved you? Jack, yes. Your Honor. And calls for hearsay response. The objection is sustained. Did you ever hear him tell you that he loved you? Objection, Your Honor. Still calls for hearsay. That's the response. That's what she, what she heard. Your Honor, that his perception. Not what he said, but what she heard. That's that's the the under, under what exception would that be? No, it's, it's not hearsay if she's relating what she learned to her own senses. And that's what I'm asking her. What did she hear from her own senses Danny Rowling say to her? Okay, we would disagree with that. And we would simply assume that it's the hearsay rule. That she heard it is precisely the problem. That it is being offered for the truth of the matter asserted is precisely the problem. That is why I hearsay is undependable and why this made unless an exception exists under the hearsay rule says that you can't get to that. That I heard it, I have to hear it to repeat it. Mr. Wallace, are you offering this for the truth of the matter asserted or for the state of mind of the listener or for any other purpose? The state of mind, what she understood Danny Rowling to say to her, what words she heard him say. If it is hearsay, and I don't maintain it is, if it is, it's certainly either a spontaneous utterance or some excited comment. Love is a very passionate uh, emotion. And so, Your Honor, uh, Assuming it's hearsay, it's admissible under any one of those two grounds or both. It will be admitted for to establish the state of mind of this listener and for no other purpose. <coughs> Miss London, did you hear Danny Rowling say that he loved you? Danny Rowling has said both that he loved me and that he didn't love me. Okay. So the answer to the question is yes. The answer to the question is that I've okay. received equivocal information on that from him. And he even serenaded you in the courthouse, did he not? That's a matter of record. Okay. So the answer is yes. Ms. London, we will proceed a lot faster if you answer the question yes or no or I don't know. Um, so let me ask it again. He serenaded you in the courthouse, yes or no? Yes, that's a matter of record. Okay. And both you and he had marriage plans, did you not? Question as to what Mr. London's plans were. She could testify to her plans, Judge. Thank you. And you and Danny Rowling had marriage plans, did you not? At one time, yes. Okay. And in fact, didn't you write in the National Examiner that you love Danny Rowling with all my heart and I always will? Isn't that a direct quote from you? There was an article that appeared in that tabloid that did quote me uh, in that sense. I would not say that I said that. I would say that the article did appear attributing that statement to me. Let me show you a copy of an article. It's marked as composite exhibit O and it is already on file in the, in the case file. I ask you to look at those three pages and ask me if you can recognize that. I recognize two of these pages. I don't recognize the first page. Okay. Go down to the little paper clip I have on the third page. Will you read what's clipped there, the very last paragraph? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will object to this document. The objection is sustained. Do you recognize that as an article that you wrote for the National Examiner? I recognize it as an article that was published in the National Examiner. Did My you, byline is attached. Did you write that article? No. National you did not? No. Who did? I don't know. Okay. Uh, let me look, have you look at the last page and the paper clip on the last page. And read it, please, if you will. 
this isn't the same oh, question that was just rejected. Lawyer, lawyer, you keep looking over at him. I, mean, I thought it was the same, oh. same question. Okay. Would you please read the last paragraph that's paper clipped on the third page of the article? As a geographer, I do object in the trial proceeding. If you're going for a particular statement made by Ms. London in the past, which I think is what he's trying to read, if it is being offered as a prior statement that she has made, I, I do not object to it. But the sanctity of the article, uh, it, of course, if she admits that it is her statement. So I don't think he can just read it except as a prior statement. The objection for lack of predicate is sustained. Let me read words to you and see if you recall those words. <clears throat> 